and hi everyone welcome back to voices western the humans of western podcast if you're new welcome this is a podcast where we dive deeper into the personal lives of students staff faculty and alumni here on western campus and all of its affiliates today i'm joined with sophie bukian a fourth year psychology student and a photographer hi sophie hello how are you i am good how are you i'm good thank you Great. We are talking right after, well, today's St. Patrick's Day, but yesterday was when people did St. Patrick's Day stuff. So how was how was your weekend? How's your weekend been so far? It was all right. I was working, uh, covering the chaos on the streets. So um, nothing too crazy. It was, uh, yeah, just another year. Just another St. Patrick's Day in London, Ontario with Western students. Exactly. Crazy time. Well, that does go into where I know you from mostly, because I know you as the senior photographer for the Gazette, the Western Gazette. Um, you want to talk about how you started working there and also how it's been? Yeah, so I, as I'm in fourth year now, my first year was during COVID and Huron, so I go to Huron and Huron's Vez is closed. So I showed up second year not knowing anybody, not really knowing anything about Western, and I picked up a newspaper and I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. And I saw you know, the contact section. So I sent them an email and I was connected with an editor. And before I knew it, I was volunteering for my first shoot. And then I started as an intern and then I interned again for the next semester. And then I finally returned as photo editor and now senior photo editor. Senior photo editor. Wow, it's a big role, I think. I, I, I would don't agree, know the yeah. <laughs> of, the, of the Gazette that well, but it sounds like a big thing. What it does is. it usually entail? Well, I oversee the section. So we've got um, Kai. He is also a photo editor. We just took him on this year. He used to be my intern. And now I've got two interns. Kai's got two interns. And then we've got a whole host of volunteers and uh, just contributors. And there's a lot of kind of just day to day tasks like you know news as it comes up and and stock photos but then we've also got our bigger projects like sex issue for example which mm -hmm. just came out about a month ago which is my favorite issue of the year my favorite issue of the year as well as i've mm -hmm. been in the past two of them it was a pleasure working with you last year i had a, i have the issue somewhere oh, here i have i have the, i have last year's issue here oh wait um, i thought Okay, we can both show them. This is uh, this that one. I am on the back of last year's issue, and it's my back of oh, this year's issue. It's my back. I'm on the front and back of this of uh, the light is bad. That Real fame. Right yeah, my I'm on the back here. There's Paula who is on the account right now, but this is the back. On the front, that is my nipple right there. I wow, we just can't get enough of you. Just can't get enough. <laughs> um, I I think that like I am known in a few circles and that's fine for me I'm like oh yeah people know who I am but every time I, I sometimes I go to like an event and it's like oh I think I know you from somewhere and I'm like yeah I think I know you too and they're like oh maybe the sex issue I'm like no no <laughs> you're from seeing me like half naked that's oh. weird you have to know me from like something cool but um, I don't have that luxury all the time now. So people are like, "Oh yeah, I, I've seen, I've seen you on the sex issue," and I'm like, "Yeah, that, that's 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 cool, I mm. guess." The cost of fame. The cost of fame. This year's was um, sillier because there's one, there's a picture of it with me and Frey where he's kneeling down, um, and I think that like. I wasn't thinking about what the impact of um, that being a photo of me would look like for any specific. Yeah, that's that's what that looks like. Um, so there you yeah. go, if you were wondering. My mom was kind of like, whoa. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah I, there was, I was just like, yeah, this is a funny thing to do. And it was, it was, it was a fun thing to shoot. Um, but like... The idea of being recognized as, oh, you're that guy who who's lighting a, a cigarette for that other guy. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, I guess I am. That is a legacy that I have. Hey, you know, could be worse. And this is a legacy we need to be talking about. 
right because here. it's lovely it's it's a because very it's... lovely it's a lovely shot series of shots really thank you yeah i really love i really love those ones the little series yeah thanks so, for always being a wonderful model for us thank you for always having me it's been fun um I I I I just like visiting the Gazette because I have friends there. But then I make more friends, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, Emmanuel's here!" And then I'm like, "Ah, oh, everyone knows me now, and it's great." It's a real Um, community. yeah, it's a good community. Um, in that though, how have you found doing photography at Western Huron in general? Yeah, so I mean, it's been such a thrill. It's been such a ride, and I've I've really really loved it. I mean. I didn't, I coming into Western, I didn't really feel like there was a place for me. So I kind of made my own and it's been really beautiful for me, to be honest, and really like where the center of my experience at Western has been is in the Gazette office. Like those people are like my family at this point and my, my community, like I don't know what my life would look like right now without the gazette and i mean it's it's a lot of work sometimes especially with you know jug juggling other extracurriculars and also being a student but sometimes it, it gets me out of bed in the morning and that is what i love to do and it has also like changed the trajectory of my life and what i hope to do and it's been it's just been a tremendous experience right what was the question I don't remember, but that's a better way to go about this. Um, structure of your life is a really large thing. Um, with that, did you always want to be a photographer, do photography? Um, I've always loved taking photos and that's been something that's brought me a lot of joy, but I don't, I come from a family of like scientists, not creatives. And that was never really something that was you know, kind of encouraged, um, at least for career. So I always was really, so I'm in psychology, as, as we've discussed, and my plan after graduating was to do a master's of social work. And that's still something I'm, you know, looking to explore down the line. But coming to the Gazette and climbing the ranks like I did, and then you know, receiving recognition on a national scale, I thought, oh my gosh, maybe this is possible. Maybe this is something that I can pursue in the real world. And I still have a lot of, you know, reservations about that. But I think that if I don't follow my dream while I have the momentum that I do right now, I'll always regret it. And I have the privilege to explore that. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, but yeah, the Gazette has been, has been the basis for that exploration. And I felt so supported and cheered on by everybody, like all of my colleagues and also Dan Brown, especially our, our office manager and a beloved Western MIT professor. He has really, really helped steer me on the right direction. And I'm really grateful. For everything everyone's contributed that's so lovely to hear speaking of the national level thing i i meant to mention it um you were not nominated for best photographer at the student journalism awards for canada it's a pretty big deal yeah so this year and last year i was nominated um shortlisted for student photojournalist of the year and photo of the year so last year i won photo of the year um and this year i didn't either um but that's okay because it kind of inspired me in a way even more than winning did I mean it was nice to have that kind of recognition earlier on because it made me think oh wow maybe this is possible maybe I can do it and now I'm like okay well let me prove it like let me show you I'll be back next year and let me show you what I can do and it kind of lit up something inside me just as much as the wind did and it's been it's been really really exciting and it, it, it kind of flipped something in my head it's like oh well if these professionals on this panel think that I'm you know semi-decent then maybe I am yeah. then maybe I have a shot definitely
So have you gotten like, I've seen that you have like, you've had further opportunities to do photography for more, like, I don't know what the right word is for like other spaces. Um, you were at Oshiega last year, taking photos. I saw like many of those. How was that experience? How'd you get to that? Well, that was, it was an incredible experience. So yeah, so I, I shot uh, Oshiega for Sirius XM and that I applied for um, and I got really, really lucky um, kind of with like some people that I've met. Um, I guess you could call it networking, community building, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I was very lucky and that's how I've kind of learned the industry the creative industry works um just so knowing far. people and just keeping me people yeah so far um that's kind of what I've learned I'm not really sure how it all looks but that was an incredible experience shooting for Sirius XM and I learned so much it was really really incredible to shoot artists that I love and I mean before doing that I did a lot of work for um live nation as well to shooting kind of like concerts um like one-off not festivals and it has been such a joy to combine two things I love music and photography and it's just it's a dream really <laughs> yeah it sounds awesome like have you I don't know it, it's not something I could like even imagine like like the ability to do like getting to go somewhere and do this thing that I love doing um and then like having proof of it and having photos up everywhere that like show like oh I did this thing it's really cool um definitely builds the portfolio and it's just generally like all around this incredible work yeah at home um in my room at home in Toronto I have my whole bulletin board of media passes now um Ooh, so nice. I'm very proud of that collection and yeah it's it's really I've just been so lucky and I'm really, really grateful for the, all, all the opportunities that I've been trusted with. Yeah. Do you have any other photography experiences that you've had in the past year, year and a half that have been really cool? Recently, I was uh, helping my friend working on her thesis film. It's a short film. Um, it explore, explores kind of like celebrating trans identity and Toronto music scene. And I was doing some BTS and some DV for her for that. So that was cool. Um, went out to Toronto to do that um next weekend I'm going to be going to Winnipeg to shoot the CFL combine for the Gazette so that's really exciting I've never been to Winnipeg never shot the CFL um it's not actually the games Canadian but football league right yes yeah, yes okay. that's it um so that'll be really exciting what else Get reapplying to Oceaga this year um Oh, I just did a, a shoot for the Fashion and Life Society Volta magazine like last weekend. Um, yeah, just lots of exciting stuff in the work. And I'm hoping to work on uh, a zine, a personal zine this summer. So that sounds really exciting. Well, lots of great things under your belt already. Definitely. Yeah, it's busy. It's definitely busy, but again, keep, you know, gets me out of bed in the morning. So a lot of people love taking photos and you said you were that's what got you into photography but I know a lot of people also don't like love the idea of buying cameras and like taking it on professionally to take photos so how are you motivated to make it a bigger part of your life yeah that's a great question and that's such a, a big kind of barrier is the accessing that equipment and that's again something I've been very privileged to access with the gazette but getting started my parents had you know little cameras like these growing up we still have a little maple's label on it from girl guide camp or whatever and so we had two we had two of these this was the kind of newer one I used out the other one doesn't turn on anymore but in grade nine I started kind of just bringing them around and taking pictures of my friend friends and I eventually moved on I was using those, but I was also exploring using disposable cameras because I liked the idea of film. And I really, really fell in love with that process. And then my mom for Christmas gave me this, I believe this is in 2018, maybe it was 2019. 
um this is mom's camera right here so that this is where the film journey really truly began and I started an Instagram account called mom's camera and I would post film photos taken on this camera of you know whatever was going on um, that I was taking pictures of and I kind of eventually progressed from there I was you know taking pictures on digital and sharing those and then also kind of expanding the film stuff that I was using for example this lovely this lovely thing I have a whole collection up here but um won't give you a camera tour right now but it really it really grew from there and turned out to be I, I ended up using that as my URL for my portfolio website and it's kind of yeah just been a really a, a driving kind of underlying story and in, in my journey and kind of ties back into my love for film and the nostalgia and the slowing down of that process and I also a lot of the time so this is this is my favorite camera this is my opens like a flex and that also kind of like even though it's not called opus camera like for me it kind of ties into that you know sentimentality and and the fact that it was like pre-owned by somebody, somebody else looked through that lens and I kind of get to share that experience with them, even if they're not here with us anymore. And I just find that really, really beautiful. Yeah, that does sound really like enriching, really. That's nice. So yeah. with that, I guess that's your parents have been supportive of your uh, choice to pursue photography more broadly. Um, you said they're both in a science background, right? Yes. Yeah. Was that like an adjustment for them or were they like always like, oh, this is lovely. You can keep going for this the whole time. Yeah. So my mom's a nurse, um, as is my sister actually just as of a couple of weeks ago. Oh, congratulations. Um, shout out to Lily. <laughs> um, and then my dad, he actually got his master's from Western in zoology and he now works in like high tech sales, but he used to do like more kind of research based work. Anyways, so I think, I mean, they were obviously security, job security is a really big concern. And in the creative industries, um, there's less of that. So, you know, that's always been something that I've thought about and they've encouraged me to think about, and which rightfully so. Um, but as they kind of have seen me gain success through being recognition, recognized by Canadian University Press, being offered a gig from Globe and Mail and Canadian Press, like they kind of saw, recognized my potential as other people were too. And they've been, you know, they've always been really encouraging and they love me a lot. And that's never been something that I've questioned that they support me. Um, but, you know, there's always been that kind of realistic concern about supporting myself, but they have been they've been really, really supportive, and I've been I've been really lucky. So that's lovely to hear. I'm yeah. Glad. So I, mom's camera. Mom's camera. I'm like that's definitely a really big part of sort of making your life your own is trying to like get other people to understand that what you want and and understand um, how you're looking at things, but then also getting your perspectives because I know that like for parents though like top security is a really really big thing and making sure that like their kids have that sort of stability is really important for them as well so it's lovely that like they can see the potential you have as well it's really nice yeah. it feels um it's it's really it's really nice i'm really lucky to have to have that okay well aside from i guess that's past and broadly present do you have any sort of aspirations or like things that you hope you get to do in uh, the field of photography? You know, uh -huh. you're, you're not, I don't imagine you're still, well, are you still planning to do a master's in social work? Or are you still planning to sort of do multiple different things at the same time? Like what's the future look like for you? Okay, so master's in social work, I'm putting that on the back burner. It is something I'm very, you know, looking forward to exploring. 
down the line. But right now, my plan is to do a master's of visual journalism uh, in Montreal, see where that takes me. We will see. Um, again, really a lot, a lack of job security and opportunity, but I'm also hoping given that the field is dominated by white men, we're moving towards a more inclusive world for photojournalism because I think that the way that media outlets, I mean, if you look at this, it's, <laughs> I won't get into the statistics no. right now. You can um, get content. <laughs> um, well, it's much harder for women and non-binary photographers to see the same success as the white men who are dominating the industry. But I'm hoping that as a world, we're collectively shifting towards including those viewpoints that are often left out of the narrative. Because I think that if I think that's what we need to be moving towards, and I'm hopeful that there is being space made. I'm also seeing that space made um, at least a little bit. Um, I'm really seeing that as well, specifically at the Globe and Mail. And I'm hoping that, I mean, it's a dream to, to do even like freelance work for the Globe. So my fingers are crossed that one day, um, I actually had to turn down <laughs> shooting something for them recently because I was shooting the short film for my, for helping my friend with the short film. Um, but that's okay. My name is out there. So again, fingers crossed, but yeah, I would, I would really love to travel and um, kind of capture the world, but not in a parachute journalism way. <laughs> and I would really like to kind of combine long form documentary with the ultimate goal of, you know, social impact and telling people's stories and making change that that's really exciting to me, um, shining light on areas that are, you know, left in the dark a lot of the time. Um, and using my unique perspective as a, a woman, a queer woman um, who comes from a mixed background, I think that I think that I hope to kind of di at least diversify photojournalism, um, contribute to a more inclusive field and hopefully up up uplifting others in that process, which I'm trying to do, um, even, even though I'm pretty low on the totem pole right now. Well, there's definitely lots of time to build, and that's a really great ambition to have, a really great place to want to work towards. In the like, in the idea of, I don't know what the right word is for it, but like sort of exploring photography brought on like a global scale. And like, because you're more focusing in journalism still, photo journalism still, rather than just like photography for events and uh, videos and whatever. Um, do you have any photo journalists you look up to in, in that? uh sense oh wow um there are countless i mean there's some that i look up like on every level um i mean the even just the photojournalists that i've encountered um on assignment have been just so wonderful and sharing what they know and welcoming me and uplifting me um one person i really look up to in the london community is nicole osborne she is a phenomenal photojournalist and it's also really inspiring to see a woman um, just so boldly, you know, achieving that success and being so damn good at what she does. Um, I take a lot of inspiration from her. There's some photojournalists I've connected with who have just been so generous in sharing what they know. Um, one namely is Nicola Chance, Nicola Chance. Um, he's a, the photo intern at the Toronto Star. Been so lovely. Um, Carlos Ascario, Ascario, uh, I believe that's his, that's his last name. Um, he's wonderful. I mean, and then kind of in the broader scale, like some artists or photojournalists that I really, Look, I mean, the first one that I really kind of flicked a switch for me was jo Josef Kudelka. Just, just sensational. Um, invasion of Prague, like my mind was blown and something switched for me that day. But in terms of like other kind of like artists broadly, um, Nan Golden is, I mean, she's on my wall right here. You can't see, but... 
Nan Golden is like, she lit up something inside of me that that flame has not gone out since. She, so yeah, so Nan Golden replaces abstraction and distance with empathetic and frank confrontation of personal experience and emotion. And she is, she's been referred to as a portraitist of souls. And as somebody who, like, I love portraits. It's one of my favorite, it's my favorite thing to do. Um, she, she kind of, she captures the subject in a way that it captures them through their eyes, but in both directions and kind of puts a soul in context. And I just think it's so, so beautiful and powerful the way that she can help people see their beauty. And I just think that's a gift that is priceless. Um, and she dares people to be themselves. That's not only the type of person I wanna be, but the type of photographer I wanna be. And um, in my in my notes here, it says that she, it, well, referring to Helen Levin specifically, who I also adore, um, says that she's somewhat, sometimes whimsical and always compassionate and displays an attitude of curiosity and social empathy. And again, that is the type of photographer I'm striving to be. Um, social empathy at the core of what I do and the core of my approach and empowering people through my photography and respect for representation. And yeah, hopefully um, giving them giving them back some power that might have otherwise been taken away. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty lovely. A lot of really great names. I recognize some of them. I'm not as involved in the photography world as you are, I imagine, but like definitely great names. If you're listening, you should definitely look those names up and see the work they've done. Um, oh, I have one more. Sorry. Yeah, no, go for it. Larry Clark. Larry Clark, um, trigger warning if you look it up. It's a bit vulgar, some of it, but he explored the amphetamine um it was kind of like amphetamine crisis but as somebody participating so it was just so candid and raw but real and um I just I thought that kind of abrasive nihilism was so and that grit was just so inspiring um and it really I don't know I, I think Larry Clark is is phenomenal as well and I know Nan Golden was also inspired by him so that was that was also interesting to learn yeah. another great name that anyone listening should check out and look at all their work um I found that in my exploration of creative mediums it's always so rich to know the experience that goes into that um it's 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 a lot different just picking up a camera like oh I'll take a photo today and that's like the it's that's not the same thing as what you do or what any of these people do but it starts with that same sort of curiosity or same support that same sort of goal um and you open a magazine there's so many photos in a magazine you open uh you watch a movie you see the director of photography like oh that's I, I wonder what that job entails i don't know what they did in this besides just like take photos but it's it's always lovely to hear um how much influence and how much motivation is behind um photography and, and just any creative medium in general i think it's always really nice yeah there's a lot more um a lot more than you would ever think i mean i used to think it was you know easy too i didn't really understand it was like oh you just you just click a button no no yeah. you click you click many buttons and there's a lot more than just clicking buttons so <laughs> I it, it it helps see photos in different light, especially when it's like for events or for or portrait shots. I know that like every once in a while there's like a photography like a, a photo shoot for a celebrity that like just looks so silly. Um I'm thinking specifically of an actor that I'm forgetting the name of right now. I mean, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna say it matters. Um but like like the same thing with modeling it's like oh seeing all these photos like oh how did they come up with that why are they doing a specific thing but like it looks good and like works and like like modeling for the sex issue like just trying to take photos of myself by of myself by myself it's like oh wow there's so much that goes into like the positioning and like the modeling and also the 
how something looks um, when designing or when doing a shoot or when taking photos. I think it's it's something that I think that people should try and um, find experience um, because I know that like a lot of the time, like arts, creative arts and just different kinds of arts are just like not looked, they aren't taken as seriously as um, as things like science or science careers or media careers because they're, they aren't seen in the same light, but there is so much that goes into them and there's so much behind them and so much passion. It's obviously, it's nice to experience that firsthand or to like hear about it secondhand. It's, it's really, really great experience. And you've really got to see, you know, witness that through your involvement in the sex issue as a model. And also, you know, your friends with Catherine, you know how arduous layout is and how, you know, we plan months and months in advance for, for the issue and how obviously it's a completely different process when you're creating a, a magazine, a creative, you know, project that's not news based it's a completely different thing and you've got graphics and photo and video and like, like it's it's wild and booking and organizing all the models and everything and I'm just I'm so so grateful to have such an amazing talented team who is just so supportive of you know the work that I do and and trusted my vision like this year especially I pushed for us to shoot on film and we did. And I am ecstatic with yeah. how it turned out. It turned and out so lovely. Thank so you. Lovely. And I was just, I felt so grateful. Um, I mean, has, you know, tying it back to mom's camera and what that sentimentality means to me is the camera we shot it on, which is, let me just bring it back because I will never get tired of looking at this beautiful thing. Pops up like this, by the way. Like, Anyways, it looks um, so cool. Like I, I was like, oh, I look like, like steampunk camera at the same time, but also just such an interesting piece of technology. It's just yeah. So that's actually the, a TLR, which is the first kind of camera that there's like four types. So there's TLR, SLR, DSLR. Sorry, SLR and then DSLR. This is the best TLR ever made. But anyways, um, <laughs> this camera belonged to the old darkroom manager of the Gazette. Uh, he was a darker manager in the late 60s, early 70s. And I connected with him through another photo editor who's in his 60s. And yeah, we ended up doing a little trade because he's no longer able to use it. But yeah, it, it really kind of tied back to like, obviously this camera is worth a lot of money, but to me, like knowing the history was, it, it's just really it's really meaningful. Yeah, I'm glad you got to keep it. It seems you to have it for yourself. It's lovely. Yeah, it's um, it's my, it's one of my most prized possessions ever, and um, I'm really, really grateful that I was trusted with it. So happy to hear from you. Yeah. Well, I think we'll wrap things up soon. Um, I know you said, well, I'll ask one more question, I guess. You said that one of the things in the near future for you that you want to work on is a scene. scene. Um, what's that going to be like? Yeah, so I actually, I mean, I'm kind of just speaking it to into existence right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, it's kind of going to be like a zine or like maybe like a mini book. Um, I'm not really sure how it's all going to play out. I'm kind of just doing a little mini publishing course right now. Um, but I think I'm going to kind of tie together some of my writing, some of my poetry, some of my, you know, just like little, this is my, this is everything. Sure. Um, so kind of like little pieces of my life from that. And then, you know, working in photos, I think. I'm thinking they'll probably be all film um, because that's where I do most of my artistic work. Um, but we'll see. And yeah, I guess I'll keep you posted on that. Um, right now, I think it's it's the focus is it being like a personal project. I'm not really like kind of concerned about commercial, you know, like concerns like selling it or, or whatever. Um, 
but I think it would be it would be really meaningful for me to kind of see my work in um, a physical you know obviously the sex issue but like kind of something that is all me and I've been able to kind of print out my work and present it because I'm taking a digital photography class right now um, and that's been really really awesome so I'm hoping to kind of to build on that yeah that and also practice like... my kind of layout skills for for the cassette for next year as well sounds like it'd be a great time I know like I have been so um what's the word I've been so sad about like this year's gazette being the the one where like most people I know are leaving because Catherine is leaving and Sonia's leaving. And I like I started the reason I started going to Gazette was because um I found that Sonia worked there. I was like, oh my god, Sonia's really cool. I'm not, I can't I was talking more. I'll visit the place where she works. And we were friends, we kept talking. Um, and she introduced me to Catherine, who was in my program, and I was like, Oh wow. Really? I thought you knew Catherine first. No, I, I knew Sonia. I knew well. I I met Sonia first and I hung out with Sonia before I like I knew Catherine at all. Then I knew Catherine and then like <laughs> I was like, Oh, I could go to the Gazette after class. I'll hang out with Catherine and Sonia and I'll just be there. And then like I've made so many friends there. I've just met so many cool people like Scott, Pat. Um, They're so Pat. funny too. It's like Thank the best. There it's honestly like I hope to see them all at my wedding if yeah. I get married. Which... Lovely, lovely set of people said people like it's it's also just a great environment i know everyone's working and i always come in and i'm like just goofing off really but like i We're it's, it's always off so it's fun funny. yeah so i guess i can look forward to seeing you there next year it'll be great yeah well i'll look forward to seeing you too and um hopefully seeing you uh, again on the front front or back or both of next year's issue so stay tuned for that <laughs> we'll see but yeah <laughs> so much for having me i really really appreciate it thank you for fitting me into your schedule it's been really lovely to talk to you yeah. all right you have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much yeah thank you bye bye hi again thank you for listening to voice of western podcast i've been your host emmanuel feel free to follow humans of western instagram account at humans underscore western TikTok, Humans of Western, as well as our YouTube channel, Humans of Western. For more of our podcasts, check out Voices of Western on all podcast platforms. Thanks for listening and have a great day.